we're now going to talk about limitation of losses. So understand, when we are doing our tax calculations, if you calculate a capital loss, so let's say capital loss, and you've got a capital gain. If the capital gain is 100 rands, and your capital loss is 50 rands, or let's actually not make it 50, 40 rands, it means that when we are going to do our calculation of our aggregate capital gain, it's going to be 60 rands. So this capital loss here reduces your CDT calculation, basically your amounts, which means it's a benefit for you. So limitation of losses section is a situation where they will not allow you to claim that loss for some reason. So the first one is connected person's capital losses, and this is what basically the most of them describes. So we've got two situations. We've got paragraph 39, which discusses a situation where you sell an asset to a connected person, but you sell an asset to a connected person. And you make a loss. Paragraph 56 has a situation where there's a capital loss on a disposal of a debt of a connected person. Okay, so paragraph 39 again, the one with the asset, the most important, the more important one. If there's a capital loss on the disposal of an asset to a connected person, it will not be allowed. They call this quite often in South Africa, they call it a clocked loss. So that means if I say my proceeds is 100 and my base cost is 120, I've made a capital loss. Now, so if I sell to my connected person, so to another company in the group, for example, to a family member, that 20 rands over there will not be allowed. So I won't be able to take it into my CDT column. But if I in future, so I won't be able to do it, if I in future make a capital gain to that same connected person, so next year I sell something, proceeds 100, base cost 60, so I make a 40 rands capital gain, then that amount which was clocked, which I couldn't claim, I can then come and deduct it. So you can deduct it against capital gains made against that same person. So paragraph 56 is a situation where I dispose of a debt that is owed by data that is a connected person. Then the capital loss will not be allowed. Okay, so for, let's say for example, Mrs. A lends her son a hundred thousand rands to complete his studies. A year later, she writes it off. Now, 100,000 rands, again, it's not the currency. We're looking at the debt here. She's got the right to receive money. So, the proceeds will be null, and the base cost will be 100,000 rands. This is a capital loss. She can't claim that to a connected person. They won't allow it. But, this section does not apply. Thus, can claim a loss. So you can claim that loss if the debt write-off is covered in terms of paragraph 12a. Okay, now paragraph 12a is a separate discussion. It was included in the acquirer of that debt, so if the debt was sold. It was a capital gain for the acquirer of the debt if it was sold, or it was gross income for the debtor. Okay, now... If you think about this situation, did the son, what did the son get here? The son got a capital amount here. He had a capital gain, he basically made money on this. Right, but it will not be gross income because it's not trading in it. And it will also not be a capital gain really for him because there's no disposal of an asset for him. He had a debt. So in that case, the sun won't be taxed. So there's 100,000 rands. If the sun won't be taxed on it, there's 100,000 will not be allowed as a claim. All right? Let's explain it a little bit different. Mrs. A lends her son 100,000 rands to purchase trading stock. He's got his little own little business, and a year later she writes it all. She'll still have this situation if she makes a loss. But because he used it to purchase trading stock, the amount will be recouped, okay, which is a section of the study in the future, but just understand for now, he'll be taxed on that amount. And because he'll be taxed on the amount that's included in his gross income, 
he'll be taxed, then this 100,000 rands will be allowed. So that's paragraph 56, guys, but not too common.